to a cat Mitch that way. He was only doing his job. Don't blame him one bit. Why, Alan? Mitch made it perfectly clear in his television speech that nothing was official yet. I wish you two would stop quarreling about Mitch Williams. It's not me, it's Alan. Hello? Hi, darling, how are you? Oh, my. I'm so glad to hear from you, Monica. How are you? Well, I'm a lot better now that I've heard your voice. Why are you whispering? Oh, well, uh, Rick is sleeping just a few feet away. I didn't want to wake him. Can you hear me at all? Uh, yes, I, yes, I can if I strain. Well, I'll uh, try to talk a little louder. No, no, it's all right. Uh, I, um, I had a nice chat with Leslie yesterday down at the center. I, I offered to help her and Laura in any way that I could while Rick was away, but she said they were making me out just fine. Uh, good. Are you alone? No, no, Tracy and Dad are both here. Right? Well, I just wish you were alone right now. Why now, especially? Because I need... I need desperately to hear you say you love me and that you miss me. And that you want me. Listen to me, young woman. I have no intention of letting these people sitting here inhibit me. You're absolutely crazy if I would do that. I love you, Monica. I love you more than I can tell you, and I miss you more than you'll ever know. Thank you. I really did need to hear that. Well, listen, you, you call me whenever you get a chance, will you? And you get as much rest as you can, and look after yourself, okay? Yeah, yeah, I will. Because if anything ever happened to you, my love, my life would be over. I mean that. Don't ever forget it. Goodbye, my darling. Gee, Alan, you ought to set that music. Shut up, Tracy. I don't want to hear a word out of you. No one. Let me tell you something. What you just heard were two people declaring their love for each other without any shame or embarrassment. I know that you wouldn't recognize that because you've never known those feelings. But I have no intention of being ridiculed for them. I'm going upstairs now to get dressed and go down to the center. Tracy, why do you have to keep goading him into arguments? I don't have to goad him into a thing, Daddy. You can see for yourself how volatile he is. He's like a volcano building up pressure. He's been that way ever since Monica's been locked up in that hospital with Rick. Well, he's worried about her naturally. Believe me, it's much more than just a husbandly concern. All I can say is I sure would hate to be around when that volcano erupts. Well, I bet it would light up the entire sky. I went to sleep tonight. Yeah, that you did. Sorry, I just wanted to close my eyes for a few seconds. How long was I out? Just a couple minutes. Where did this blanket come from? Courtesy of yours truly. Thought you might catch cold, so I covered you up. Thank you. I don't know if that's the uh, doctor reflex or the maternal instinct, but I appreciate it just the same. Why well, don't you rest a while on? No, I can't. I, I keep thinking about those young kids at the State University coming in. And I... <sighs> Frightened, bewildered, and yet at the same time, they're trying to be cool. I know what you mean. It's hard to... Uh rest when you've got so much on your mind. Yes, it is. Hi. Wow. Hi. I can see some smiling faces for a change at the rare side. Well, um, I just, uh, talked to Alan. And I feel 100% better. Oh, that's good. Hi, he. Oh, it sounds wonderful. Good. How is it out there? Still pretty rough. I don't suppose there's any plasma for life. Ah, uh, not so funny. Wonderful. Well, I'll see you. Mm -hmm. Monica, I, I know that you've been feeling a lot of fear about your old feelings, but that's, that's only because it's a nightmare that we're going through, I think. I pray you're right. 
really pray you are leading. Hi. Hi, Monica. Well, I heard you were going to join us. Yes, Jesse set me up this afternoon. I've been up here for three hours already, and I just, it just doesn't seem possible. <laughs> Audrey, have you seen Steve recently? Well, the last I heard, he was going down to a meeting with Dr. Lombard and Dan about emergency measures for more plasma. Well, we can sure use it. Well, Steve can use rest more than anything else right now. Yes, I know. I've never seen him look so badly, and he refuses to stop. You know, maybe you ought to get Jeff to talk to him. He seems to be the only one Steve will pay any attention to these days. Hmm. Well, are we ready, ladies? All right. Yeah. Mm. Bye. Look. See you later. Okay. okay. Bye bye. Hey, aren't you going to call Leslie? No, she's she's not going to be home. Well, how can you be so sure of that? Well, I talked to her earlier and she said she had something pressing tonight. I was trying to apologize to you, Larry. I'm I, I I didn't expect to find you here. Well, I guess I was drawn here because, um, because his office represents a kind of normalcy for me. It does? Well, we aren't here to normal routine days. We're talking about the patients, surgery, living the lives of doctors, normal duties, normal lives. Of course. Up until the madness began. Monica, that madness will end. I fell asleep earlier. And when I woke up for one wonderful moment, I thought I dreamed the whole thing. But it never happened. Of course, it all came rushing back, and uh, I felt just how real it is. You know, you can't go on like this. You have to concentrate on everything being over. It will be over. Will it? For us? Yes, and we will both go back to that uh, normal existence you just described. You sound so confident. What reason do you have for being so confident? Life. Beginnings and endings. Oh, I wonder. Some things do seem to end. But they never really do. Monica, when this is over, you may find yourself with some very pleasant surprises. Oh, such as? Such as getting out of this madness a greater sense of gratitude for the people and the things that make up our normal lives. I know I will. Madness is a rather high price to pay for a heightened sense of gratitude. We didn't have any choice. It came our way. We were here. Now, that's life. And what you're now saying is that, is that human beings have very little control over what happens to them. No, I'm not saying that at all. So many things are beyond our control, Rick. No, I don't accept that. Beyond our control? No, I won't buy that up for one minute. I gotta talk to you both. They told me I'd find you here. Oh, what is it? It's Steve. What? He's into the secondary stages of loss. Oh, no. Yeah, well, yeah, he's a patient himself now, and I'm afraid Arthur's not taking it too well. Anne's with her right now. I'm going right up, honey. Uh, of course. It's no mistake, Rick, if that's what you're hoping. No, there's no mistakes here. I will have to do some planning before I'm no longer capable. All right. I want no let-up. There is to be no discouragement, no faltering. You've given us a very fine example to follow, Dr. Arnie. Here to go on fighting. With all your knowledge as doctors, with all your energy as dedicated men and women. Monica? 
Oh, I promise, Steve. We're not going to give up, not until... Well, not until it's over. Thank you. Now, I'd like to explain. Steve, I think you have to go into it now. I've got to, Rick. I want to make sure that things will run smoothly here. All right. I want Dr. Lombard to be in charge. I think he's best qualified, don't you? Yes, till you're back on your feet. <laughs> exactly. See, why don't you rest? No, no, I'm, I'm not finished. I want my orders carried out to the letter. Very well, Dee. About the priority for the plasma. Yeah, I've already talked to Jeff about that, and I'm sorry, but I think you're totally out of line. No, no buts, Rick. I will not have an injection until every other patient in this hospital has been treated first. Is that understood? Yes. Thank you. Anybody know where Jeff is? He's with a patient, dear. Never lets up that boy. A real fighter. Rick, I, I hope you're as proud of your young brother as I am. I certainly am. I just wish that Dad was still alive to see him now. A brother's pride is one thing. A father's, that's something else. How is Steve? The sleep is not the best thing for him right now. Well, sleep isn't going to stop the virus from spreading through his system, killing him like all the others. Hey, would you take it easy? I mean, don't let the fatigue tear you apart. Well, it isn't fatigue. It's pretense. It is pretending that this epidemic is going to come to an end, that Steve will pull through. You know, I really think it's time we all stopped pretending. Monica, I don't think any of us are pretending. We're not going to win this fight, Rick. Yes, we are. Look, we're doctors. We have the latest we're equipment. we beings, too. Well, I've never denied that. And we should know when we're beaten, and know when to throw the towel in and holler uncle. Would you stop it, Monica? No. Look, hysteria is not going to do any good. It's not going to help not in any... I'm hysterical. I'm rational. Yeah. I happen to know that we've reached the end of our endurance, and there is no end in sight to this disease. Well, that doesn't mean that we quit, that we give up. Why not? That carrier's out there, and he's spreading this virus faster than we can hope to deal with it Fine, in here. we have to go on. You go on, I'm not. You may think you're some kind of Superman who wants to go on fighting knowing you're not going to win, but I am not. I'm human and I'm going to give up. No, you're not. Not now. Not at this oh, time. Oh, you no. watch me. It isn't going to end, Rick. Not for you and not for me. And we're not going to have the normal life. Yes, we'll get back to that. No, yes. we're going to die like Steve is going to die. And one by one... How are you? Embarrassed beyond belief. About what? Oh, about uh, going to pieces like you did last night. Look, there is nothing to be embarrassed about. I'm just glad that I was there and I was able to help you. Well, I. Yeah, so am I. I'm a doctor. And I had no right to just uh, lose control of my emotions like that. I remember you telling me once that doctors are not gods. They're mere mortals, just like anyone else. Oh, fine, Rick. Yes. If we can't uh, control our feelings, how are we ever going to help patients who are relying Look, on... Look, you were exhausted. You were strung out emotionally. And you were dead to this world when I finally left. I don't even remember falling asleep. I mean, the last thing I remember was... You sitting there trying to reassure me. Well, I stayed for a while after you drifted off. I wanted to be sure you were all right. Thank you. That was very nice of you. I think we're all kind of responsible for each other in here right now. Yeah, well, I better get to the fifth floor. Um, has there been any news about the plasma? How is Steve now? He's very, very weak. But Monica, if you have this feeling again, please find me and I'll be there to help you. Dr. Quartermain, your husband's on the phone. Oh, thank you. I'll give Alan my best and I'll see you later on time. Alan? Oh. No, uh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm all right. I'm, I'm 
Sometimes I'm really glad to hear your voice. You don't know how 